Double. Yeah. 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 Good. Really nice. I got involved with martial arts from watching um, The Green Hornet, uh, Cato, Bruce Lee back in the day as a kid, and also uh, Jimmy Wong Yu in the Chinese matinee, you know, theater that we'd go to every Saturday um, afternoons. And those, actually, Bruce Lee and Jimmy Wong Yu were my, my greatest influence in getting into um, martial arts. And uh, when I was a kid in Canada, I remember a youngster, a friend of mine, uh, Stephen Anderjay, he got me involved. He saw me, you know, playing around with some of the guys in the schoolyard, and he, you know, came up to me and asked me, where did I train? Where did I study? And I thought he was kind of like off the wall with that question. Where do I study? I go, this is just me, man. This is like Kung Fu Theater, you know what I'm saying? Bruce Lee, Green Hornet. And he's like, imagine what you could do, man, if you got some training. And I know just a guy. I know just a place. And he took me to Sapin Karate, um, Grandmaster Sensei, Robert Sapin Sr., and Robert Jr. had a school in Edmonton, you know, Alberta, Canada. And he took me down there, and um, the rest is, uh, is history, as they say. How did the name Sugarfoot came about? Um, a friend of mine in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, we were kids coming up, um, working at the, you know, at Sensei Sapin's uh, gym, gave me that nickname. And that nickname came as a... Uh, um, uh, a melding of two names, uh, um, of course, Sugar from Sugar Ray Leonard and the foot from Bill Superfoot Wallace. And I remember it used to call me, uh, first I tried the disco kid, um, you know, okay, the dancing kid, because my style, again, the dancing, moving around style. Then one kid one day, and he's doing it to be funny, to poke fun at me. Where I'm sitting there in the mirror moving around, he goes, Man, hey, Sugar Ray, they need a Pete Sugar Ray Cunningham. Yeah, yeah no, 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 how about Pete Superfoot Cunningham? They go, Well, wait a minute, man, you can't call him Sugar Ray or Superfoot because both those names are taken, and both those fighters are active fighters doing their thing. You can't do that. So he goes, How about, how about we call him, man, Sugarfoot? Ah, and they all started laughing, and, and like, you know, whatever. So we kept going, he goes, Yeah, Sugarfoot, man. It's like Sugar Ray and Bill Superfoot Wallace put together Sugarfoot. <laughs> Well, what got me into kickboxing is uh, I guess it was a natural, you know, transition from studying martial arts and boxing, you know, as a youngster. And I remember Tom Forstroita and Doug Dunn. Um, my first kickboxing trainers, they had traveled to the States here and uh, they worked out with Benny the Jet Urquidez and the Urquidez family, um, Ruben, uh, Blinky, Lily, Sensei Arnold, Sensei Smiley. And um, they came back stateside with, you know, with the stuff and they came to our gym and they saw myself, uh, Ivan Remillard, um, a couple of the other fighters that Bob had coming up, youngsters, and we were good tournament fighters, you know. And he thought, you know, Bobby got some good kids here, and we could, you know, train some of these kids, like PD, Ivan, a couple of these guys, and for trade. We'll train these kids, you just train at your gym. And one thing led to another, and there was about six of us who uh, Tom took to 3D Amateurs, and uh, like I guess at the end of the day, myself, um, you know, was the one who turned pro and went from there. <laughs> My very first kickboxing match, um, I remember uh, heading down to Calgary. It was in Calgary. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, and Calgary is like 300 kilometers south of us. And uh, I remember driving down there with my sensei, Robert Jr. And, uh, you know, about maybe a third of the way down there, he goes, man, that's a long ride to Calgary, isn't it? And I'm like, yeah, man, that's a long ride. He goes, uh-huh. He goes, huh. Well, you know what? I go, well, he goes, it's going to be a longer ride if you lose this fight. <laughs> and so we, I'm like, okay, it's on. But we get down there, and, and to me, it was kind of exciting. It was like, I thought it was going to be like, uh, you, you do karate tournaments all the time. You do uh, kumite. So it's the same thing, you know, just with more boxing or something like that. So it's, it's, it's no problem. And I get in there, man, it's a little different because there's nobody yelling, stop, point, when you're done. It's continuous. I mean, really continuous. And the guy's trying to, you know, rip your head off. In karate, you know, there's a bit of an honor thing or in, uh, you know, martial arts sparring. Bit of an honor thing. Crack guy a couple of times, you back up, get a point, and it's done. But this is like boxing, and this just keeps going. And um, so I guess that was a bit of a, but not too much of a, a shock for me because I'd done amateur boxing. So it was just, you know, but still a little different, you know. We 
received this call from Hong Kong saying that they're doing a film with UMBO and they would love to have me come over and, and play a part in it. And I thought, excellent. Again, a dream come true. Um, I've always dreamt about traveling to, to Hong Kong or to China, the ancestral homeland of Jimmy Wong Yu and Bruce Lee, my two, you know, my two heroes. And here was the opportunity. And um, it was wonderful. The point of my career that was that when I got that call to go do Above the Law, um, lightweight champion and um, super lightweight champion of the world. And um, we got that call right in the middle of me doing two title defenses. Uh, I, I like to tell people that in 86, I fought 12 times that year. And if you go back in the day, that's nothing for fighters, you know, in the 40s and 30s and all that, um, and maybe even 50s. But to come to this modern time, a champion fighter, if you fight uh, three major fights, four major fights a year, that's a full schedule. Here I was doing title offense after title offense because we had several titles in, in several different, you know, associations. Um, but we received that call from the guys in Hong Kong to come over and work on Above the Law with UMBO. And that was such a golden opportunity that I thought, I got to go. Now, we'd sign a contract to fight, um, you know, uh, 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 two fights, like uh, one at the beginning of the month, one at the end of the month, at the beginning of the, the, ne the next month. And when we got the call, it was like, we're going. I remember us going to Hong Kong and start working on a film, and then it's like, you know what? I got to tell these guys what's up. I thought I'd go there. It's a small part. I'll go do a small part. You know, up two weeks, I'm out. I'm back in L.A., get ready for the fight, and uh, everything would be cool. But the time's rolling, and we're getting closer to it. And then I let the guys in Hong Kong know that, um, listen, guys, I got to come clean with you now. I, um, this is a golden opportunity, and I thank you guys so greatly for having me travel to Hong Kong and, and work with, uh, you know, UMBO and, and, and you all on this film. And I, it was such a great opportunity that I, I kind of gambled. And I go, what's going on? I go, well, I, I signed for two title defenses, and this film is right smack in the center of all of it. And come, like, next week and a half, I got to fly back to L.A., fight this fight, you know, at uh, Scott Coker's promotion in, um, in San Jose, and then fly back and finish it, and then fly back right after and fight, you know, and have this other title defense. And they, oh, man, Petey. How could you do this? Uh, uh. And then I thought, you know what? I mean, either way, you could be in trouble. They could fire you right then, um, you know, or, well, they could fire you. They, they broke me off. And I said, you know what? Go take care of business. Don't get cut, though, because we don't need no cuts in your face, you know. Go take care of business and come back. You're a great champion. We know you're going to win. Go on. Go take care of your business. I was like, wow, man. That's, that's, that's love. I was lucky, too. You could get sued. Anyway, so we, we flew over, took care of business, flew back. And um, finished the film, flew back to L.A. a couple of days, up to Reno, and, and defended the title again. Before traveling to, um, to Hong Kong to work on, on, on writing wrongs above the law, I, I, um, I hadn't really heard you know, of UMBO before. Jackie, Samo, you know, all the time, you know, all over the place. And when I got there, they introduced me you know, to UMBO as Jackie's you know, little brother, and um, he's great, he's this, the other thing, and gracious dude, real poised, you know, in control. And again, being a fighter, I can just look at you and give a good look and tell what's coming from a man and what, he, what he's about. And um, while I was there working on that film with this guy, I mean,